This is a presentation on the New York Times building. This building, this presentation reflects the research paper written by Lisa Freeberg, a graduate student at the University of Wisconsin Platteville. This presentation was designed by Mr. C. Blaine Shanehard III, Ashley Menard, and Adam McLimans. The New York Times building is a building in New York City. It is owned by the New York Times newspaper, and the New York Times felt several years ago that they wanted to have a building where they could house all of their employees in one location. That was the need for the project. Uh, also, with the project came some design responsibilities. First of all, the New York Times wanted to have a open and transparent building, meaning that they wanted to have their building design reflect the type of newspaper organization they feel that they are. Also, they wanted to make sure it had an open feel to it so people did not feel confined and have a large spanning feel when people would walk around. The building was designed by architect Renzo Piano at FX Frawley Architects. And after the design was completed, it was given to structural engineers to make it work. The building was actually took a fairly long time to design because they wanted to give adequate time to the structural engineers to make sure that the design was environmentally uh, conscious and was economically based or justified or designed responsibly. The building spans 52 stories, 1048 feet tall, and at the time of completion was the third tallest building in New York. There is a total of 1.6 million square feet of all the floors of said building. There were several design goals, a few of them stated earlier. Uh, one of the design goals that the project owner required for the building was that it was energy efficient. Also, they wanted it to have an open and honest, forthright and transparent feeling or aesthetic feel to it. They also requested that it have a tapered appearance such that it disappeared into the sky as people would look atop the building from the base of said building. There were several design challenges that the structural engineers had to figure out based on the architectural design of, the, of said building. Mainly, the decision was what kind of material to use. Reinforced concrete was considered, but that did not meet the project owner's requirement of having an open floor plan. Therefore, steel was the chosen material. Steel was chosen because it does have design flexibility. It is relatively low cost. The construction time is fairly reduced compared to other material usage and many contractors in the area were familiar with constructing steel buildings. Uh, the, the, the owners wanted to have to make sure that the building had a transparent and earth-like feeling. Therefore, ceramic tubes were installed to allow sunlight into the building, and low iron glass was also used to give the idea or feeling of transparency. Energy efficiency was also a priority of the building owner. They wanted to make sure that there would be reasonable heating efficiency and cooling efficiency at times and that the building would reflect natural light into its inner core. Uh, there was the request that the building be open or have open areas. Uh, also, they decided, the structural engineers decided to meet this requirement that they would use, uh, they would use box levels increasing in size as you moved increasing in size with increasing height and use built up I-beams with increasing flange thicknesses. Uh, cross bracing was also used and steel rods were used instead of 
angle beams to reduce the bulkiness and increase transparency of the building itself. Aesthetically, with regard to the connections, knuckle connections were used. It was decided that these connections would be less bulky and still meet the design or the structural design requirements for the building. And they also were smaller in size than other girder plate or, or uh, plate connections that would be typical of this kind of dis construction. The request of the project owner was that there would be very large interrupted bays. This is very difficult because most of the time designs or internal structures will have large columns on the interior. Therefore, a design challenge was met where the use of transfer trusses and girders were used to transfer load on hanging systems such as cantilevers in order to open up the feeling of certain bays or areas within the building itself. Tempera temperature differential was also a challenge that was met by the structural engineers. Because the internal building is kept at a fairly constant temperature and the exterior of the building would fluctuate in temperature throughout the season, there was an estimated four inches of change that may occur based on temperature changes throughout a year. Therefore, trusses were used to connect internal and external columns. These were used to reduce that uh, increase or decrease in, in size of the members based on temperature fluctuations. With regard to fireproofing, all building codes for New York City were met. The decision was made only to fireproof the external core of the structure and um, this was done and does meet all New York City building codes. The idea that the project owner would have an efficient building that was very lit with natural light, have a transparent, transparent appearance inside and out was to the best of the structural engineer's ability met. There are some concerns that other improvements could have been done, but with regard to the final project, it does meet many of the project owner's requirements of having natural light in the building, being efficient on utilities, and have a transparent and tapered appearance. Thank you very much.